Hopefully your crop is up now, even way up in the northern part of the country, your corn or soybeans. As soon as that pops out of the ground, we want to start thinking about evaluating what your plants look like in terms of nutrients and then also running plant tissue analysis because let's face it by the time you see a nutrient deficiency you've already lost a bunch of yield. There's a couple different ways to look at plant tissue analysis. One could be I'm going to do something this year with a foliar feed. I'm going to use the plant tissue test to direct what I'm going to apply. But more commonly we're seeing farmers look at a trend over the season with plant tissue tests and then adjusting their fall soil applied program. With corn or wheat, any of the grass crops, a lot of them take their nutrients up fairly early in the season or start in a big way fairly early in the season and we do see some differences out there. So we usually encourage you as soon as that corn comes out of the ground in the spring or spring wheat, we would tell you start tissue sampling very soon after. On our own farm we'll usually wait a week to 10 days something like that and then we'll get started with tissue sampling. With soybeans and many of the broadleaf crops we usually wait about a month and then we start tissue sampling and what we really encourage you to do is I'd rather have you take fewer spots in fewer fields but do it more often then take a whole bunch of spots just one time during the summer. What we're trying to figure out here is how are your nutrients tracking as you go throughout the summer. What I often tell people that have never done plant tissue analysis before is just take the best area in a particular field and the worst area in that same field. Do plant tissue analysis in those two spots separately all summer long, geo-reference them or put a big flag up so you go back to the exact same spot all the time and also have soil test data from those exact same spots and then by the end of the summer when you've got your soil test information from last fall, you've got your tissue test information from all summer long in the good spot and the bad spot, you should be able to figure out why the good area is good and why the bad area is bad. Certainly some farmers will look at one test and be wildly influenced by rainfall. Uh, if you got a good shot of rain just a few days ahead of when you pulled that test, well it's going to look like all kinds of nutrients got into the plant and hey everything is rosy. But then as soon as that rain goes away and that instant flush of nutrients happens or, or is done happening, now we go back to reality of hey we're struggling with one thing or the next. Now you may say well hold on I don't need this I do a good job soil sampling. That's great but it's a whole nother kind of test to do a plant tissue test to see okay we've got this in the soil but what is our crop actually able to get out of the ground because what happens sometimes is you may see a visual nutrient deficiency in your crop. So using a soil test in conjunction with the plant tissue analysis and then identifying any visual symptoms as well is the best program to manage those nutrients for your farm. So Darren mentioned earlier you can use this to adjust things for next year which is commonly what we're doing on our farm. However, if you have a good way to get nutrients out during the season, you can do some foliar feeding. You can put some on with a side dress application. You can put some more nutrients on with irrigation. There are a number of different ways to do it. But by the time you actually figure out, oh, in my plant tissue analysis, I'm running low, well, you know what? You may have lost yield already by that point because just think about even the turnaround time in this. All right, you run a plant tissue analysis. It takes a few days to get the results back. It takes you a couple more days before you look at the results and make a change. You could be 10 days later from when the actual nutrient deficiency started happening. Well, the other thing is just getting those nutrients into the plant. So even if you get out there right away, maybe you're thinking, well, I'm going to run with the dry fertilizer because it's a little cheaper and then you don't get rain for a week then all of a sudden what good did you do? You, you haven't done anything, you haven't solved that problem, now you went another week uh, with that plant suffering. Yeah, and it's the same kind of thing with potassium and phosphorus. If you don't have good soil levels of those, well they really don't move in soil hardly at all, unless you had very light soil with a lot of rainfall. So realistically, are you going to get a lot of phosphorus and potassium into that plant? Probably not through foliar feeding, unless you were going to do a whole bunch of foliar feeding real often. Here's the other thing too is, is by doing soil testing and plant tissue testing when you look at both results and you see wow I've got some manganese in my soil I'm short of manganese in my plant what's happening. It could be that you've got some kind of tie up in your situation where an agronomist can help you or at least direct you down the right path of oh if you're really high in this nutrient that could cause a tie up here. Also you could see you know what my pH is way out of whack and if your soil is way too far on the acid side or way too far on the high pH side you may need to get that fixed first 
to release those nutrients and let them be available for the plant. All right, here's one last thing that I'll share with you. Many of the testing labs have just taken all the results they've gotten over the years and said, all right, in the middle, that's what we're now gonna call medium. On the high end, that's what we're gonna call high, and on the low end, that's what we're gonna call low. Well, is that really low, medium, or high? I don't think so, because think about who usually sends plant tissue analysis in. It's a lot of agronomists, seed reps, chemical people, whatever, who identify a problem in a field, and now they send problems in. So I'm just trying to say, we don't really know exactly where your level should be if you wanna raise 300 bushel corn or 400 bushel corn or something like that. So that's why it's a good idea to start keeping records yourself. What were the levels at what stage of development, at what growing degree days, that kind of thing. That's what a lot of the high yield farmers are doing around the country. And that's what we'd encourage you to take a look at as well. Well, and here's a program that just takes a little bit of time. It only takes about five minutes to pull a plant tissue test. Maybe it takes you two minutes to package it up and send it off hey, and it takes you five minutes to read the yeah, results. But one quick thing about that if you have dirt on the leaves we encourage you to take distilled water and rinse the leaf off. Not tap water, distilled water. Dirt on the leaf sample will skew the data some so make sure your leaves are clean, send it in a paper bag, pretty simple. My point was it doesn't take much time. A tissue test costs somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 bucks. Uh, and a soil test only costs in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 bucks. So it doesn't cost much money to do this. It just takes a little bit of time to really up your game, to manage your dollars you're spending on fertility on your farm, and hopefully maximize your yield and profitability. One of the other things you need to do to up your game is control weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.